let's start our tutorial today. Uh, this is the last uh, tutorial of this course. And uh, today I want to summarize, uh, uh, let's look back to some problems in your homeworks and uh, tests. And I will talk about homework one, three, and five. And uh, uh, at 10.30, uh, Julia will talk about uh, the, the homeworks uh, two, four, and six. And I summarize some uh, common mistakes uh, when you uh, do your homework. I just summarize here. And uh, now let's, uh, uh, let's look at the problems one by one. Uh, the first one, uh, this is the uh, problem in your homework one, and this is about the uh, uh, time domain transformation. Mm. A continuous time signal X of T is shown uh, in figure one and uh, a sketch and uh, label each of the following signals. And, and the first one, it is uh, X of one half uh, times T plus two. And uh, the second one is uh, X of two minus two T uh, times U of T plus one. Mm. Uh, the answers uh, are shown here. Uh, this is uh, the, the, uh, the answer of uh, the problem A. Uh, uh, first, uh, we do the uh, time uh, shift. Uh, we shift the, the signal to the left by two units and uh, we get the, this result. And then we uh, uh, compre compress the signal. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, we stretch the signal uh, twice and then we obtain this result. Uh, uh, in the original signal, it is from minus five to zero, and the in the new signal, it is from minus ten um, to zero. And uh, uh, problem B. Uh, problem B. It is uh, uh, this one, and. First, we also need to do the time shift uh, because the, the amount of the time shift is the same as the, uh, the problem A. So the first step of uh, the problem B is also the first step of the problem A. So uh, I omit it here. And we first get uh, shift the signal to the left by two units, and then we obtain the x of t minus two. And then, we reflect the signal uh, from the from the left uh, of the vertical axis to the right of the vertical axis. Then we obtain this result. And and then uh, we do the time scaling uh, from minus t. Uh, to minus two T. So we uh, compress the signal to one half and then we obtain this, uh, this result. The original signal is from zero to five and the new signal is from zero to uh, five over two. And there is an additional U of T, minus, uh, T plus one. So, and uh, this, uh, uh, the signal is shown here uh, the multiplication of the two signal, uh, uh, the result is uh, the same as this one because you can see that uh, when uh, this signal only takes non-zero non value when t is larger than zero and uh, this one, when, when t is larger than zero, uh, u of t plus one is one. So the final result is the same as this one. And uh, what I want to comment here is uh, you do the time sh uh, shift first uh, is much e easier. 
because uh, if you do the time uh, scaling or the time reflection, uh, the amount of uh, you the amount you shift will uh, will change will be changed. So you need to uh, identify uh, how 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 much uh, the signal shift. For example, uh, I think I I I. I I don't need to explain it more because in the uh, previous tutorials uh, I have talked about uh, about twice. Uh, just remember, time shift first is uh, easier. And and this is all another problem in homework uh, homework two uh, uh, homework one. Uh, there are four. Uh, there are six complex numbers. Uh, you are asked to uh, plot the, the plot them in the complex plane and uh, de determine the magnitude and the angle of each number. Uh, I take the problem D as an example. Uh, the problem D, it is the more uh, the multiplication of uh, uh, of the two numbers. Uh, the first one, uh, the square root of three minus j to the power of nine. Uh, j to the power of nine is just equal to to j. So uh, it is written here, and uh, one plus j is copied here. Mm. We can see that there. Uh, this is the the multiplication of two uh, complex numbers. So it will be uh, easier to use the uh, polar form to solve this problem. So we rewrite uh, the square root of three minus j into the uh, polar form. It is two times exponential minus j pi over six and rewrite one plus j into the polar, polar form. It is the square root of two times exponential j pi over four. So uh, the, the magnitude or the modulus of the, uh, the, the, uh, the product of the two numbers is the product of the two magnitude is two times the square root of two, and the phase is the sum, is the sum of the uh, the phases of the two numbers uh, minus pi over six plus pi over uh, pi over four, and the result is pi over twelve. So, and uh, the uh, the uh, the result is plotted here. What I want to comment is that uh, there are two forms to represent a complex number, the rectangular form and the polar form. Uh, if you find it difficult to solve the problem in, in one form, just uh, think about uh, the, other, uh, the, the other form. Maybe it will be uh, much easier uh, in general. Uh, if uh, there there is the the sum or the difference of two uh, complex numbers, it will be easier to solve it in the rectangular form. And if there is the uh, multiplication or the division in the problem, then it will be more easy uh, easier to solve it in the uh, polar form. So you just need, uh, need to remember that there are four, two forms. Uh, try, uh, don't just uh, use one form. And next, next let's look at uh, homework three. Uh, homework three, uh, this is a problem uh, about the 
uh, the Fourier series, uh, there is a continuous time signal x of uh, x of t, uh, x of t is periodic, and uh, the fundamental frequency is four. Uh, the expression of x of t in a particular uh, period is uh, this one, when t is larger than uh, minus two and smaller than two, x of t is equal to exponential minus uh, uh, 2t. Determine the uh, Fourier series a representation of x of t. So uh, let's look at the answer directly. Mm. Uh, for uh, the fundamental period is given, it is uh, for the fundamental frequency is the uh, two pi divided by the fun fundamental period is uh, four, it is pi over two. And then we use the standard formula, the integral to calculate the Fourier series coefficient. AK is equal to one over T, T is, uh, T is four here, the integral from minus uh, over a particular peer, period, which uh, from minus two to two exponential T, uh, no, 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 uh, X of T exponential minus JK omega zero T, oh, uh, I miss uh, DT here. And then we substitute x of t into the, the integral. Mm, it is exponential minus 2t. And omega 0 is with pi over 2. And then we can, uh, this is an integral of, of, of uh, an exponential signal. Uh, so the integral of an exponential signal is the same exponential signal with an additional factor uh, in the on the denominator, and then we calculate the difference of the the signal uh, from t equals uh, equals to two bit uh, and the t equals to minus two. And the result is here. And the next, uh, we can further uh, simplify the result. It is, uh, we can see this part. Uh, it can be written as exponential four times exponential j uh, k pi. And this part, uh, it is exponential minus four times exponential uh, minus jk pi and uh, minus uh, exponential jk pi and exponential minus jk pi are all equal, are both equal to minus one to the power of k. So just uh, extract the, the term in front of the bracket and then write the exponential four minus exponential minus four here. So oh, this is the, uh, the Fourier series coefficient. And then the, uh, the um, we represent x of t in the Fourier series uh, form. It is the infinite sum a k times exponential j k uh, pi over two t with a k above. Uh, so there, my comments are as follows. Uh, this is just a routine procedure uh, to calculate the uh, Fourier series coefficient and, and the represent the signal in the Fourier series form. Uh, you need to just remember it. And another thing, uh, it's because I noticed that uh, when when I graded your homework, I see I saw many of you discuss whether k is equal to zero or not. 
can see in this problem, there is no need to uh, discuss whether k is equal to zero uh, because uh, when k is equal to zero, uh, there is no uh, there is no zero terms. Uh, uh, there is no zero term on the denominator, so this expression is a uni uh, is a uniform uh, expression. Uh, it also applies to k equal uh, to k equals zero. So you don't need to uh, in this problem you don't need to discuss it. But if there is a, a for example, when there is j 2k pi on the denominator and there is no uh, the term of eight, then you need to discuss when k is equal to zero uh, and or not. So this is, uh, I want to emphasize. And, and next one is the problem four. Uh, the problem four of uh, homework three, uh, I just uh, show the sub problem A here. Uh, utilizing the definition of Fourier series to determine the uh, the definition of the of Fourier series to determine the Fourier series representation of the continuous time signal. Uh, this one, it is a series of impulses, and uh, k can only be integers. This is also the standard. Uh, procedure to calculate the Fourier series. Mm. Uh, I denote the this signal by x prime of t. Then we first uh, identify the uh, the fundamental period t is equal to two, and then the fundamental frequency omega zero is equal to two pi over t is two pi over two, it is pi. And then we calculate the Fourier series coefficient. A k is equal to one over t, the integral mm, uh, over a particular period uh, from minus one to one x prime of t, exponential minus j k pi t dt. And then we substitute x, the expression of x prime of t into this integral. We can see that when in the particular period, the expression of x prime of t is the, uh, just delta of t. Because there is only one impulse, impulse in the in this region, so it becomes delta of t uh, times exponential minus j k pi t dt. Then we use the property of the impulse signal. Uh, it takes non-zero value when t is equal to zero, and it takes all uh, zero values when t is not equal to zero. So this term we can replace uh, t with zero and this term is equal to one. And so there is only a, a, the impulse signal in the integral. And then uh, the, in, uh, the, the impulse of uh, the integral of the in, impulse signal is equal to one. So the result is one. Uh, the result is one over two. And, and then we express the signal in as the Fourier series. It is the infinite sum one 
<coughs> no one over two times exponential j k pi t. And here is my common. X of p has only one impulse in a specific period. Uh, here it is the uh, the region from minus one to one. So there is no infinite sum when substituting uh, or it should be x prime of t, x prime of t. So I see some of you, uh, I remember that some of you uh, uh, substitute the infinite sum into the, uh, into, into the integral and then and they may make some uh, very complicated arrangement, and then uh, and they lead to a they lead to a, a, a wrong answer. So uh, I just want to uh, remind you this one, and then it is homework five. Hmm. Consider a, a continuous time LTI system whose response to the input is x of t equals exponential minus t plus exponential minus 3t u of t. And uh, uh, the output is uh, yt is uh, two times exponential minus t minus two exponential minus uh, four t times u of t. Uh, first, uh, uh, determine the Fourier series. Uh, no, no, no. Find the frequency response of this system and then determine the system impulse response and find the differential equation relating the input and output of the signal. And let's look at the problems one by one. Oh, I, I give all the answers here. I, I, I noticed that uh, most of you are very good at solving, solving such kind of problems. Uh, both the continuous time signal uh, system and the, the disc discrete time systems. Mm, but I, uh, I thought uh, such kind of problems, uh, uh, you solve such kind of problems much better than uh, calculating the integrals and the infinite sums. Uh, I, I'm not sure the, the reason. Uh, I think uh, I, I don't need to uh, there is no much thing I, I need to uh, explain. Uh, let's just uh, uh, there, let's just look at the the answers first. X of j omega. Uh, X of j omega. Let's use the um, uh, useful uh, result in, in in our lecture. The Fourier transform of exponential minus a t u of t is is uh, a plus j one over a plus j omega. This is very useful when solving such kind of problems. Uh, you must remember uh, this uh, this result. So uh, the the Fourier transform of x of t is one over one plus j omega plus one over three plus j omega. And then we uh, combine the two terms. Uh, it is four plus two j omega over one plus j omega times three plus j omega. And y of j omega in, in, a, uh, in the same way, it is two over one plus j omega minus two over four plus j omega. And uh, combine it together, it is six over one plus j omega times 
two uh four plus phi omega and then h of j omega the frequency response it is y j omega uh, over x of j omega it is nine plus three j omega over four plus j omega times two plus j omega and then uh, problem b determine the um, impulse response of the signal uh, of the system mm. uh, we use the uh, uh, we, we we solve it in this way mm. we write the x of j omega uh, as a over 4 plus j omega plus b over 2 plus j omega. Mm. Then we need, uh, well, and then we uh, combine it together and then on the numerator, here, here is 2a plus 4b plus a plus b times j omega. And then we compare the, the co coefficient here and here. We can find that 2a plus 4b is equal to 9 and a plus b is equal to 3. Then we can solve the, uh, the system of equations a is equal to a and b are both equal to 3 over 2. And then we obtain the, re, uh, the uh, x of uh, h of j omega 3 over 2 times 1 over 4 plus j omega plus 3 over 2 times 1 over 2 plus j omega. And uh, we use, also use the result uh, just mentioned uh, mentioned just now. Mm. H of t is equal to mm, 3 over 2 exponential 4 minus 4t times u of t plus x, uh, 3 over 2 exponential minus 2t u of Then uh, the problem C, the differential equation, uh, H of J omega, we have calculated, uh, we have calculated it here, and uh, H of J omega is equal to Y of J omega divided by X of J omega. So we write, um, write this expression as as in this way, so uh, then uh, because uh, when you multiply the j omega in the frequency domain, then there is a derivative in the time domain. So the differential, uh, the differential equation is uh, is this one. Uh, I see that some of you use use some other methods to uh, uh, to calculate the the, the partial uh, fractional expansion here. Uh, they they don't solve the system of equations. They use some other some other methods to solve uh, to to obtain the uh, the h of j omega here. Uh, I I won't tell you some details about the method. Um, uh, if you are interested in, uh, in this method, you can read uh, your the appendix A of the, your textbook. This is a very uh, very quick method uh, to obtain the coefficient of a and b. 
uh, but because um, in the lectures, uh, Professor Chao has not mentioned it, I, I will also not uh, uh, go through the details. So if you are interested, you just uh, read the, the appendix of the textbook. Uh, it is very quick, but you, you need to be careful when you use it. And uh, next is the problem uh, two of homework five. Uh, this is uh, the uh, problem of the Fourier transform of a discrete time signal. X of n is equal to three to the power of minus n u of n minus two plus uh, four plus uh, four to the power of n u of three minus n. Uh, the first one uh, you are asked to uh, use the definition to determine the Fourier transform, and the second one um, uh, the 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 Fourier transform of this signal is given here and then are asked to use the property of the Fourier series, uh, the Fourier transform to determine the, uh, the Fourier transform of X of N. Let's look at the answers. The first one is X of J of me, uh, the Fourier transform of X of Exponential j omega. We uh, because, uh, this one uh, you need to use the definition of the, the Fourier transform. So it is the infinite sum x of n exponential minus j omega n, and then substitute the expression of x of n into this signal. Mm. X of n has two terms. The first term, when n is uh, 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 the first term only takes non-zero values when n is uh, uh, when n uh, is uh, equal or equal to or larger than two. So the the lower bound of the infinite sum is changed from minus infinity to two, it is three to the power of minus n exponential minus j omega n. And the second term, uh, n only takes a uh, non-zero value when n is uh, equal to or smaller than three. So the upper bound of uh, the uh, the, the infinite sum is changed from plus infinity to three. And, and next we, uh, we made some arrangement. Here I changed the variable. We use uh, m is equal to minus n. Uh, we use m to replace n and m is equal to minus n. So four to the power of n is changed to four to the power of minus m and exponential minus j omega n is changed to exponential j omega m. And then uh, we, we made some rearrangement and then we calculate the, uh, uh, this is the, the geometric, uh, geometric uh, sequence. So we calculate the, the sum of the geometric sequence and the result is here. Mm. What I want to mention is that uh, if you directly, uh, if you don't change the variable and directly use 
this form to calculate the sum of the a geometric sequence. So then you must uh, pay attention that uh, the common ratio is not uh, four exponential minus j omega. And because uh, the first term of the sequence, if you, uh, uh, you use the uh, n is equal to three and uh, uh, four to the power of three exponential minus j omega three. If you uh, think of this term as the, the first term of the geometric sequence, then uh, the next term is uh, four to the power of two and exponential minus j omega two. So the uh, the common ratio is uh, is also this one. So you must pay attention. So uh, if you change the variable, the result will be uh, intuitive. And the next one, you are asked to use the, the property of the Fourier trans the transform to obtain the, uh, the Fourier transform of the signal X of N. Mm. This is what we have known. We have we have known before. We just use uh, the single Fourier transform pair to determine the uh, the Fourier transform of of this one. Uh, we can see first we. Uh, Uh, we do the time time shift. We shift the signal to the right by two units, and uh, in the time domain and in the frequency domain, there is an additional exponential minus j two omega here. And then we compare this uh, this re uh, this result and uh, and our target. Uh, we need to, uh, we can see there is a, there is an additional nine here. So we need to multiply a one over nine in front of the, the signal, then use the linearity. This is in the frequency domain. We also multiply a one over nine. And uh, this is the first term of uh, X of N. And uh, the second term, the second term, we also use uh, the commonly known Fourier transform pair. Uh, four to the power of minus N, U of N, the Fourier transform is one over one minus one over two, uh, one over four exponential minus J omega. And uh, first we do the time reflection. In the time domain, we do the time reflection. In the frequency we all, domain, we also do the time reflection. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we compare this, uh, the signal uh, with uh, our, uh, with the result, uh, our goal. Uh, we can see that we need to uh, do a time shift. So we shift the, the signal to the right by three units. And in the frequency domain, we add a exponential minus J three omega. And then we see that there, uh, there is a one over 64. Uh, in this signal, but uh, uh, here, here is no uh, the, this coefficient. So we need to multiply a uh, 60, uh, 64 in front of the signal and then use the linearity uh, property 
in the frequency domain, we also need to add a, a multiplier to four. Um, so the final result as a uh, Fourier transform of X of N, it is equal to this one. I hope uh, from this problem you can um, get a feeling about how powerful the, the properties are. Uh, maybe you you may think that uh, this is more complicated and this is much easier. But sometimes uh, using a property of Fourier transform is much easier than directly calculate the uh, calculating the the the, the integral uh, the infinite sum or the infinite integral. And next, uh, this one is a uh, problem in, in text two. Uh, you are asked to uh, determine the Fourier transform of uh, this continuous time signal. Let's look at the answer. Uh, I think it is uh, a little bit uh, tedious. X of j omega is uh, use the standard formula x, uh, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity exponential uh, x of t exponential minus j omega t and uh, substitute we substitute the expression of x of t into the integral and then we uh, we split the the signal into two parts. The first part is, uh, uh, this is a platform shaped signal. And this one is a co cosine three pi t, copy it here. And this one you can, uh, I think you, you need to be, get, be familiar with, the, uh, with this one. It is a platform shaped signal we can, uh, there is a, a result. Uh, uh, it is, uh, you can find it in your textbook or in the slides of the lectures. I directly write the, the, the result here and calculate the integral and get the result. I think uh, it, it would be, be better if you can uh, remember it. And the sec second one, uh, this integral, write the cosine into the Euler's formula form, exponential j3 pi t plus exponential minus j3 pi t over two. And then further split this into two parts, the first part and the second part and combine uh, this exponential and this exponential together. And this also combine this exponential and this exponential together, and then it is here. And then it becomes uh, an integral of the, hmm, the integral of the, uh, the exponential signal, and then Mm, I think it is not hard, but you need to be, to be very careful when you solve it, or you will be made, you will make some mistakes. Uh, with some real uh, further arrangement, uh, you can get this result. Uh, it is okay if you uh, just write it in this form. And if you write in some other forms, I, 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 I also will check whether it is equal to this answer. Uh, but if you already, you have already get, uh, uh, have already got this answer and you made some further 
uh, arrangement and you make some mistakes, then some, some points will be deducted. So, uh, if you want, uh, so this, this term is okay. In this problem, I just use the definition of the Fourier transform to solve to solve it. Uh, I want to call what I want to comment is that if you are interested, uh, you can find the a property uh, multiplication in time domain convolution in frequency domain the textbook and solve it again. Uh, I remember that uh, in the lectures we only. Uh, we only talk about uh, the convolution in time domain, uh, multiplication in frequency domain. And this is a dual uh, property of uh, the one we have learned in the lectures. And if you use this property, it, uh, this problem will be, uh, solving this problem will be much easier. Uh, I will. I will not go through details about uh, how uh, how to use this property to solve it. If you are interested, you can read your textbook and think about it. And uh, oh, I have no time. Uh, uh, this is the last problem. Uh, the problem. Uh, this is in your text uh, two. And this is the frequency response and determine the differential equation relating uh, the input signal x of t and output signal y of t. I think this is very easy. If here I write uh, I write uh, uh, plus uh, j omega squared. If I write in this way, it will be very easy. But uh, some of you don't know how to, when uh, there is omega squared, how to solve it. And some of you even ask during the, uh, ask me during the test and after the test, and uh, say that uh, there is something wrong in the, uh, in this problem. Uh, in the, the, the denominators in the, uh, the problem and my answer are different. I think you, uh, you need to get more familiar with the uh, complex numbers. Mm. The, the minus x, uh, the minus j omega, uh, minus omega squared is just equal to j omega squared. And then it will be easy to solve it. Okay, this is the, uh, the end of the tutorial. And uh, it is also the end of all the tutorials, my tutorials in this, in this course. Uh, thanks for your cooperation. And uh, 1030, Zhe Yuan will, will give uh, another tutorial. Um, uh, let's have a break. Thank you. A system is invertible if either of the arguments follow. The first one is that the no, there, is, there are no distinct inputs x1 t and x2 t will lead to the same output y t. And the second argument is that an inverse the system exists. And the third one is the, uh, the fourth one is the stability. The system is stable if the bounded input xt will lead to the bounded output yt. Next is the time invariance. A system is time invariant if a time shift in the input, say the xt to xt plus t0 
only causes a same time shift in the output. That, that means the yt will be, become yt plus t0. And the last property is the linearity. A system is linear if the linear input ax1 plus bx2 will lead to a linear output ay1 plus by2. So we have encountered a problem in homework two, which is the problem two is about the system properties. Um, I will, the first, um, the problem A is this signal output, yt is equal to zero when t is smaller than zero. When t is not negative, yt is equal to xt plus xt minus three. We can easily see that it is not memories because it depends on t minus three, but it is causal because it only depends on current time t and t minus three is the past time. So some of you may have some deduction on the following proper properties. The first one is the time invariant. It is not time invariant. Say we have our input as x1 t which is equal to x t minus t zero. Then the output is y1 t, which is um, when t is smaller than zero, it is equal to x1 t plus x1 t minus three. And it is equal to x t minus t zero plus x t minus t zero minus three. And notice that um, we still have t minus zero and t greater than or equal to zero. However, if we shift the output yt, now we have yt minus t zero, we will have that when t is smaller than t zero, it, it is equal to zero. When it is greater than or equal to t zero, it is actually equal to xt minus t zero plus xt minus t zero minus three. So they are not equivalent. So it is not time invariant. And it is not invertible. So we can find some different inputs that will lead to the same output. And also you can see when t is smaller than zero, the all, all the output is zero. So it is not invertible. And we can also prove that it is stable because um, we can use the triangle inequality says that A plus B is smaller than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. So it, if XT is bounded by M and YT will be bounded by 2M. So uh, this is a discrete time system the output yn is equal to x n minus two minus two x n minus a. It is time invariant. And you can check when, when the input is x1 equal to x n minus n zero, then y1n is equal to this term and it's, it is equal to y n minus n zero. But it is not invertible because if we want to get y n equals to zero, obviously we can have the input x one n equal to zero for all the time. And we can also construct another sequence x two n when two to the, uh, when n divided by six is integer, x two n is equal to two to the power n minus six. And we can check that if we have this input, the yn will also be zero for all n. So it is not invertible. And it is linear and it is also stable. For the stability um, concerns, the if x n is smaller than m, so some because it is the minus a minus b, a minus b, a minus two b. So some of you say that it's smaller than or equal to minus two B. So which is wrong. So we don't have this triangle inequality. It's actually smaller than or equal to A plus two B. 
the smaller than 3m. Because m is a positive integer, if you have this, you will get minus m. Minus m is actually a net, um, smaller than zero, so which is wrong. So next is the convolution. The convolution in discrete time signals the, the convolution of xn and hn is equal to the summation of xk times h and minus k from k equal to minus infinity to infinity. The, in discrete time domain, the convolution of xt and ht is the integral of x tau, h t minus tau, d tau from minus infinity to infinity. And it is also equal to the integral of h tau and x t minus tau d tau. So we, when you're doing the convolution, I noticed that some of you may mix the tau and t. So I, and if you, you are some confused about these two parameters, you can change, change it like to p, x p, h, h, t minus p, d p. So when you observe this constant, this, this equation, you are doing the integral over the variable p and you will only have one variable t in your final result. So um, if you, are, you, you think you may mix tau or t, you can change it to another variable. So for the convolution, um, it has three properties. The first one is the com commutative um, like I said, is ht convolute with xt is equal to the xt convolute with ht. And the second one is the distributive property. xt convolute with h1 plus h2 is equal to x convolute with h1 plus xt convolute with h2t. And the third property is the associative property. Um, and we have also three problems in the homeworks and tests on the convolution, and we will see them one by one. So the first is in homework two, the problem three. Um, we compute and plot the convolution of the following two function. The first one is the difference of two um, unit function, unit step function. Xt is equal to ut plus 0.5 minus ut minus t point minus 0.5. So it looks like this with 0.5 here and 0.5 here. The ht, um, it is equal to t plus one when it, t is in minus one to zero, and when t is in zero and one, it is equal to minus t and one, plus one, and zero are where. So we will con convolute ht and xt. So um, we have shown many times that we use a the shift so we first flip one of them and then we shift it to t and we move it from left to right and we discuss the cases to get the final result so i i won't go through the same methods again but in this tutorial i would like to give you some tricks to solve it. So um, actually it requires some properties of the, of the convolution. So first one is that the ht convolute with delta t minus t zero. So can somebody type in the chat box, what is this? 
So anyone knows? The convolution of a signal with a delta function. No? No one knows? Is equal to x t minus t zero. And then I will use the associative This one is the associative property of the convolution. And the third one, I will use this one. So the differential of F convolute with G, if F is and G are differentiable, it will be equal to F point convolute with G, and it can also be F convolute with the difference differential of G prime, which is G prime. So now let's see what is our first um, signal. The, our first signal is UT plus half minus UT minus half. And third, the fourth one I want to show is that the difference of a unistep function it is equal to the delta function. So our our x is equal to half is equal to u t minus t plus half minus u t minus half. So if we have the differential of dxt in time domain, it is equal to delta t plus half minus delta t minus half. So if we plot it, it will be look like this. The delta in, in minus half, it is a pulse here with one equal to one and at half, it is minus one. So, so now we have the difference of differential of X. Now we convolute it with G, with G is the triangle function. Now we use the first one, a a function convolute with a delta is a shift in time domain. So the first one, um, the first impulse is delta t plus one over two. So we will shift it for um, left for 0.5 unit. So which is So here from minus one, if I shift 0.5 is three over two. So the second term is the delta t minus uh, half. So we shift it left for half unit and we also flip it over the x axis. So it will be two over three and here is one, here is the minus one. And then we add up these two, two parts, it will be like this, this, and this. So now we have H, H prime convolute with x prime convolute with h. It is from minus three of two and three over two. If you observe with our final, final equation uh, answered, the t 
smaller than minus three over two and t is greater than three over two is will be zero. So we only have the answer between minus three over two and three over two. So this way you can check that a, the range which we have value is the same. Uh, further, you can actually um, see that it is the final answer actually is the integral of this, this figure. So our final answer looks like this. It is from two over three to two over three. So using this method, it is easier for you to check the range and also discuss the cases like we have what uh, if we don't count the zero cases, we have one and this this part two and three, three cases, right? So it is a, in the answers, we have one, two, three. So each part, it is the integral of one part. So the, um, this is the way I do convolution. When I learned the system and signals course. Okay. Do you have a question about this method? So um, it requires you know that the convolution of X, a, a signal of delta signal is actually a time shift. It's so cold. Um, a shift in time domain. And we also use the differential property of the convolution terms. So um, if you use this in the exam, I will also give you full marks. And if um, from this to the final result, it is actually the integral. Okay, so let's try to use this method to do the set the following problem. So you can try for the problem five in homework two. I give you two minutes.
okay? Have you done using another method? So I move to another room. It may be noisy here. So I will louder my voice. Here is the answer. From the answer, we see that uh, there are four cases and two of them are zero cases. And we have, sorry, it is from one, two, three, and three, two, five for the second case and the third case. So let's see. Um, now we have HT is equal to a, uh, from one to three is equal to two. So it is actually equal to u t minus one minus u t minus three. Okay. So uh, we also do the differentiation dht dt. Now um, it is equal to delta t minus one minus delta t minus three. Our x t is equal to sine pi t for t from one, from zero to two. Zero to two. And it looks like this from zero to two. So now, we convolute h prime t and x t. So we can actually very quickly write down the case. It's like the sine, uh, sine pi t minus one minus the sine pi t minus three. So we also need to discuss the cases. So first we try to plot out the shift, um, the two shift. So first, the first we, we shift it for one unit, right? So the edge is look like this, let me plot this. This is T. This Y axis is H prime T. We will have um, at one, we have a delta, uh, which is equal to two. So at three, we also have a minus delta, which is also equal to, it is equal to minus two. So first we shift it, shift our XT for one unit, for one unit is here, but now the higher point, is, the peak is two, the value is minus two. And for the second part, we shift it for three unit and we flip it over the X axis. So it is look like this. So four is here and five is here. So now we can see that uh, it has values from one to five, which match our answers. And also we have two cases. The first case is the integral of a sine. The first case is, is the integral of a minus sine, okay? So if, um, so finally, we will have have this the sine. Um, the integral of the sine is cosine. The integral of minus sine is minus cosine. So it match our answer. But using the integral of a function, uh, some sometimes you need to add a constant, right? So the integral, or say the t it may equal to one over t squared plus c. 
So this method, you you may need to shift it uh, to for some unit. But for this way, you are easier to check the range and discuss the case, right? And you can you can better check the range is from one to five. And also you can um, check check with your answer. So it is some integral of the sign. So um, we have our last question in the convolution. It is in test one, the the three the problem three. And our HT again it is a unit step function differentiation and and the second the xt it looks like this so so you can try this again uh, this one it is easier than the previous case because uh, we have the sine cosine in the previous problem but this one um it the figure is more simple Uh, you can do this. Uh, I'll also give you two minutes. You can also try to use the previous method to do it, but you can compare like um, which way you think is more convenient for yourself. Okay, let's see the answers. So um, this problem, we have like five cases, five cases. And this is the um, previous method. Like I said, if you get confused with the tau and t, you can change it to p here to easily distinguish these two variables. Because when you shift, shift it, you may get confused with the parameters. 
okay? But if um, you truly understand the convolution meaning, I think you won't confuse these two parameters. But let's see, um, you seen the, you seen our new method, um, the edge is equal to ut minus U t minus one. So the differentiation is equal to delta t minus delta t minus one. So if we plot it, we have a delta t at zero and a minus delta t minus one at one. So this is one, this is minus one. Now we look at our x t, it has a shape from, from minus one to zero, and then from zero to one is equal to one. So now the convolute with h prime t and x t is actually equal to x t. Uh, say I explicitly write down this. It is equal to delta t minus delta t minus one convolute with h t. Then we use the associative property is equal to delta t convolute with x t minus delta t minus one convolute with h t. And convolution of h t delta t is equal to itself and then the convolute with delta t minus one is a shift for one unit. So now we plot h prime prime t convolute with x t, it will look like this. So at uh, first itself looks like this, and then we shift it by one unit and flip it. So we get h prime t convolute with x t and it looks like this. It is a triangle and here it is a unit step. So it, it is from minus one to two. So if we check the answer, we have five cases. The first one is t minus t is more than minus one. The first, the second one from minus one to zero, third one from zero to one, the first one from one to two and the last one from when t is larger than two. So this is also the case. We have zero, this, the first case, the second case, third case, fourth case, and five case. So using this method, you get the range and then you get how many cases. And also, um, if you, you want to get ht convolute with xt, it is, uh, the integral, the integral, and it will look like this. The convolute with a, a, a t is two power two t square. And the last one is this. And if you plot this, plot out this, you will also have the same from minus one to zero it is one over two t square plus t plus one over two. So we have one over two here. And when, when it is equal to minus one, it is zero. And we, from one to two, we have it is equal to two minus t. Two minus t, uh, so it is zero here but when it is equal to one is equal to. Let me check. Um, never mind. So, so using this method, you can check the cases, but um, sometimes you need to shift it 
up and down if you're using the integral. Say we, we have stated that the differential of the ut is equal to delta t, but the integral of the delta t is not equal to ut. Actually, it's equal to sgnt, the sign, the sign signal. It will look like this. It will be a half when t is larger than zero and to minus half when t is smaller than zero. So you need to shift it for one unit, which is ut minus one. Okay, so the use the this method using the differentiation, but when you if you want to use this method to get your final result, you need to carefully check the integral part because you need to shift it up or down. Okay, so um, this actually is what I want to share with you. Um, if we do this one step further, we can actually differentiate both the h and also the x. And we can see the h prime t, like before, is equal to this and this. We can also differentiate x. If we differentiate x, so when from minus one to zero, it the differentiation of x t is a constant one. And then the differential of a constant line is zero. And then we have a step downward. And then we have a delta here. So, if, but this is quite confused because you need to convolute with convolute a with h prime and also x prime. So actually this one is equal to, it is related to the convolution of x t of, uh, of h and x, but it is now the second differentiation. So you need to do, do it two times. But also you can use this way to check your answers and, and it will also give you that there are five cases and the range of your result and which you which will which range your final result will lie in. Okay. So um you just need to remember this the differentiation of the step case is delta tau. So when your step case is going down, going up, it is the positive delta t minus t zero. But when it is going down, when it's going down, it is the minus delta t. So if I, I give you this, like the staircase look like signal, the differentiation like say this is our edge t. It is some unit step function add up together. The difference, the differentiation of edge t, it which is say this is zero minus one minus two minus three. This one is one, two, three, and four. So from minus three, we go up for one unit. So we have delta t plus three and then we going up at minus two is delta t plus two and then delta t plus one plus delta t so for one to four we we go we are going down the staircase is going down so we have minus delta t minus one minus delta <clears throat> t minus two minus delta t minus three and minus delta t minus four. So if we plot plot out, it will look like this. So we have four going up. 
for going down. Okay, so that and then you can convolute and then doing the uh, shift in time domain to check your answers. Okay, so in the final exam, we also have the convolution problem. First, you can do it using the uh, regular method to do to get your result. If you want, you want to check the cases and the range, you may using um, the second method. And also you can, um, you can check if you do the differentiation of your answer. Say so you're doing the differentiation of this, 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 you can finally plot out it will be look like this. The it is equal to the convolution of h prime t and x t. Okay. So um, that's all for today's tutorial. For others contents, um, you may refer to lecture slides, tutorial slides, and also the recorded video. Okay, so that's the end. Thank you.